welcome to one and all on our special resurrection day service. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Today I'm going to be speaking on the subject. Good Friday is gone and resurrection Sunday is here. Good Friday is gone and resurrection Sunday is here. Some of us, what could be so good about Good Friday? When we are reflecting on the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus' death was not an ordinary death. He, to he was tortured. He was beaten 39 times. They spat in his face. They slapped him up in his, fa in his face. With the palm of their hands. They buffeted him. That means to batter or to pound. To strike him violently and repeatedly with their fists. They placed a crown of thorn, thorns on his head. And pressed it down until the head was bleeding. They pierced his hands. They pierced his feet. They pierced his side. And they mocked him repeatedly and mercilessly. When we read about the crucifixion or we see films of the crucifixion, it is very heart-wrenching. When we reflect on what our Lord Jesus endured to save us from our sins, although he did no sin, Jesus paid it all for us. Somebody give God praise for such a wonderful sacrificial death. Amen for our redemption. Hallelujah! As cruel as his death was, it was a good Friday for the entire human race. Because Jesus brought hope to us all. John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world. Hallelujah, confirmation. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. No one could have done what Jesus did. 1 Peter 1 verse 18 says, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversations received by, the, by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish, and without spot. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world. But was manifest in these last times for you. God didn't plan the death of Jesus in Genesis or in the time of Isaiah. But he ordained it before the foundation of the world. So when you find that Moses was writing in the book of Genesis, and uh, Genesis 3 verse, 18, verse 15 says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head. The Lord was addressing the serpent there, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This plan was far long before the book of Genesis. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 3 says, He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But verse 5 is so powerful. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Hallelujah. He was bruised for iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Do I have a witness in the house? Hallelujah. That the stripes of Jesus brings about healing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you Lord. You paid it all. Hallelujah. By your stripes we are healed. Isaiah lived about 700 years before the time of Jesus living on the earth. 
yet he prophesied these things accurately. And we find that it came to pass. Amen. John 1 29 tells us. The next day. John the Baptist. See Jesus. Coming unto him. And said. Behold the Lamb of God. Which taketh away the sin of the world. It is true. That in old day, old time days. They used to kill lambs and kill bulls, kill pigeons, kill all sorts of animals. But today we don't need to kill any animal because the blood of Jesus was shed once and for all. Hallelujah. And he said it is finished. Hallelujah. Man's redemption is fully paid. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus did it once and for all. And the blood will never lose its power. Do I have a witness in the house? Hallelujah. Blood of Jesus is still effective today. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Many men of God prophesied about Jesus' death. And Jesus himself said in Matthew chapter 12, verse 14, For as Jonah, so Jonah, was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Jesus himself told his disciples about his death and resurrection many a times. John 12 verse 23 we find that and Jesus answered them saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground, and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Jesus had to die. It was prophesied. It was a den from before the foundation of the earth. John 3 verse 14 tells us, Jesus says there, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And... We find verse 32 says, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Hallelujah. This is said signifying what death he should die. Thank you, Jesus. Luke 9, 22 says, He told his disciples saying, The son of man must suffer many things. And be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes. And be slain. And be raised the third day. Jesus told his disciples over and over again about his death and his resurrection. Yet they were not prepared for it. As hard as it was. Jesus knew that this was his main mission to, for coming to earth. It was not easy for him to endure. And to fulfill the mission. And that's why we find Matthew 26 verse 38 tells us that when he was with the disciples in the garden of Gethsemane, then said he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and he fell on his face and prayed saying, Oh my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Amen. Amen. Luke 22 verse 44 tells us, And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. The mental agony and torture that Jesus was going through even before anybody touched him was unbelievable. Just to carry the weight of this world on his shoulder. It was difficult for him to even conceptualize. It was hard. When he was considering what was ahead in the garden. And that's why he prayed three times. Luke 22 verse 42, 42 tells us. Saying, Father. If thou be willing. Remove this cup from me. The 
flesh didn't want to go through. But thank God the flesh did not win the battle. Hallelujah. For the spirit of God within him allow him to say nevertheless. Not my will but thine be done. Hallelujah. Thank to you. Thank you Lord Jesus. For yielding to the spirit of the Lord. And yielding to the will of the father. The flesh in him was warring against his spirit. But after praying this prayer for the third time, his spirit man prevailed. Hallelujah. And overcame his flesh. And he fully yielded himself to the father's will. God's will is not always easy to follow. But it is always best for us in the long term. Amen. Amen. While he was in the garden of Gethsemane, Judas came with a great multitude. And betrayed the master Jesus with a kiss. And we find that Peter was getting bad. You see when you hear Jesus tell us to pray and pray. That we enter not into temptation. We have to obey Jesus. Because if we're not in the spirit realm. We can't understand spiritual matters. So Peter was getting bad. And Peter decided if he's fight they want. They're going to get fight today. So Peter took out his sword. And Peter began to draw sword. And fire sword too. But the man is not so skilled in handling the sword. So he took off one of the high priest servants. Here. Jesus said unto him. In Matthew 26, 52. Put, up, put again thy sword into his place. For all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. If I wanted to fight these people, man, they're not much for me to, man, to handle. Presently, if I just ask the Father for some angels, he will send me 12 legions. One legion is 6,000. So what is 12 legions? What is 12 legions? 72,000 angels. Was at his fingertips just like that. But Jesus decided, I'm going to go through. Amen. I'm going through. The angels were available if he just asked of his father for them. However, verse 54 tells us that Jesus said, but how then shall the scripture be fulfilled that thus it must be these things that are happening to me, Peter, that were written years and years ago and it has to be done. So put up your sword. This is not a fleshly war. This is a spiritual war. And I'm going to win this fight, Peter. Don't worry your head. I'm going to overcome this battle. Relax, Peter. Everything is all right. Everything is under control. Hallelujah. And so we find that John chapter 10 verse 18 tells us. Jesus said there, no man take it, it from me. But I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down. And I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. Jesus greatest mission on earth was to obey his father's will. And he was determined to do it at all costs. And we find that the human beings who, were, who, who took him. And they were about to crucify him. They themselves were spiritually blind. They didn't have a clue what they were doing. And that's why we find that Philippians chapter 2 verse 8 says. And being found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself. And became obedient unto death. Even the death of the cross. They were setting up Jesus for example. He made himself of no reputation. Even though he was God. The son of God. He made himself of no reputation. And took on the form of a man. Humbled himself. 
and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And because of this, it says, Wherefore, God had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, hallelujah, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Somebody give Jesus praise in the house. Hallelujah. Every knee is going to bow one day. Every tongue is going to confess one day that he is Lord to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Even those who pierce him, they too will acknowledge him as Lord one of these days. Jesus went through the crucifixion and the death and fulfilled numerous prophecies of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms, etc. Even himself spoke about what was to come. As cruel as it appears to the natural eyes, it was necessary so that we could be saved, we could be healed, we could be protected, and we could be victorious over the enemy today through the blood of Jesus. Somebody give God praise in the house for the blood. Hallelujah. We overcame the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. We find that Hebrews 9.22 says, And almost all things are by the law, purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. Romans 5 verse 6 says, For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet for adventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Somebody give God praise for such wonderful love. Hallelujah. We were yet sinners, but he still died for us. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Much more than, than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through, Christ, through him. Now, not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Atonement is the reconciliation of God and humankind through the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ. We have seen enough evidence in God's word to tell us that as cruel as his death was, that it was necessary for our atonement and to redeem us all from our sin. Amen? So good Friday was truly a good day because we couldn't, we, there was no other choice in the matter. No one else could have done it. Only Jesus could have done it. He was the spotless lamb of God who could take away the sins of the world and he did. And because he came to earth and fulfilled all that the Father sent him to do, it makes his entire time on earth a success. If he completed everything else and he did not die, it would have been a failure. And that is why we find that John 19, 3 tells us, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. It is finished were some of the most powerful words Jesus spoke while he was on earth. His mission on earth was 100% completed. Therefore, we can see from God's word that Good Friday was really a good day because the mission Jesus came to fulfill on earth, it was finished. Amen! Amen. Hallelujah! When we know God's word and we understand God's word, we don't need to wear black and white on Good Friday and mourn and be sorrowful and grieved every time it's Good Friday. Instead, we should be glad because we know how the story ends. 
And we should be happy knowing that Jesus completed the mission that he came to earth to fulfill. And we now have free access to eternal life through his shed blood. Amen? Amen. Beside all that was written in the books of Moses and Isaiah and the Psalms and the prophets, Jesus himself told his disciples over and over again about his death and his resurrection. Yet they were, not, they were not prepared. We have to be so careful with overwhelming grief, fear, and sorrow. Because they can cause us to lose our peace, to lose our joy, to lose our hope, and our faith in God's word unnecessarily. The disciples experienced this kind of fear and this kind of grief. And this kind of sorrow. And they were in hiding. And they were fearful. And they were in deep sadness. When they could have been celebrating and rejoicing. If they were living in the word. They would have realized that the death of Jesus was a fulfillment of prophecy from centuries and centuries ago. And it manifested before their eyes. They should have at least remembered that Jesus himself told them over and over again that he was going to die. But it wasn't going to be a long-term thing. He said, by the third day, I will rise again. He always interjected that bit so that they should have some sort of faith and hope after he died. But we find that Satan wants God's people to be sad, to be sulky, to be depressed, to be in despair, even when we should be happy and we should be joyful. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. He don't want us to have any strength. So he wants us to be just sad and sorrowful so that we will be weak and we will be fearful. When we learn to stand on the word of God, in the midst of whatever we are going through, we can have hope. Amen. For whatever God has promised, he is more than capable to perform. If Jesus' disciples were holding on to the promise of his resurrection on the third day, when Good Friday was gone, they should have been waiting. And anticipating for that third day to come. Amen. Hallelujah! Because the third day was going to be the resurrection Sunday. Amen. Satan thought that he scored a great goal of victory when Jesus died on Good Friday. He himself was in the dark. Even those who killed him, they didn't know what they were doing. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. And we find that first Corinthians 2 a tells us, which none of the priests of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. They didn't have a clue what they were doing. They were in the dark. If they knew what they were doing, they would not have done it. Because there was victory in that crucifixion. There was fulfillment of prophecy in the crucifixion. And they would not have wanted to be used to do such things. But they did not know. So we find that those who killed him were in the dark. And Satan himself was in the dark. And was having a great celebration in hell. All day, for all night Friday, all day Saturday, all night Saturday, you could imagine the boogie down going on down there. Because as far as they were concerned, we've got our man. This man has been casting out devils. This man has been healing the sick, making blind eyes to see. Causing people who are sinners to change their lives, prostitutes and all sorts. All sorts of the ragamuffins are getting saved under his ministry and he's filling up the kingdom of heaven. So they were saying, we're glad to see the back of this one. He's finished. We got him. 
him once and for all. But little did they know. While party time was in full swing. And they thought that they were really in charge now. Because this one is taken care of. While celebrating that great victory which they, which they think they thought they had. Jesus turned up early Sunday morning and interrupted the party. Come on. And when he came to where they were having that party, he commanded Satan. And he said to him, give me the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Hallelujah. And he took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And he burst the tomb and rose up triumphantly. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What a triumphant victory. He whipped the enemy on his own top. And rose up with resurrection power. Glory to God. And that's why we find that Matthew 28 verse 2 tells us. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven. Hallelujah. And came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. Those who crucified him thought that because he presented himself as a lamb to the slaughter on Good Friday, that they could control him on Easter Sunday. But they had more than what they were bargaining for. A lot more than what they could handle. There was a great earthquake. And the stone, that big massive stone that the soldiers thought that was able to hold Jesus in. The stone was rolled away from the grave. Come on. The angel took care of the big stone. And the soldiers who thought that they had some sort of strength because they were doing something on Good Friday. Throwing slap, throwing box, punching, spitting in face, slapping up with palm of hand, talking all sorts of insulting words. They thought they had the man under control. So they thought, well, we're going to stay by this tomb. And if it's one thing we're going to do at this tomb, they're talking about resurrection. So let them come here on, on, on Easter Sunday morning. Let them come here resurrection morning. And they're going to get a battle here because we're here for fighting and for war. We have been paid to do a job and we're going to keep him right there in that, in that, in that tomb. But on the, on the right, on the, on the resurrection Sunday, they met something more than what they were bargaining for. The place began to shake with a great earthquake. Hallelujah. Jesus did not come up simple. He came up with resurrection power. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The grave could not hold him. Hallelujah. The stone could not keep him in position. And those soldiers who thought they could confine him. What if I say happened to the soldiers? The soldiers, they lie down and they groan like dead men. They couldn't even mash hands. Dead men, they were on the ground, flat on their back. And you hear you come up against a contest. We used to have a saying back home. Every bad John have their match. So when you hear people playing bad, we never used to bad with them too tough. Or too much. We just leave them alone. When the right time come, they will get their match. The soldiers met something on that Easter Sunday morning. They could not handle it. And they, were, they knew that the contest that they were up against was more than what they could manage. And they lie down there on the ground like dead men. God, the angel came, rolled back the stone, and sat down on the stone. Who is the soldier who wants to take me out? Come out now. Not a man move. Jesus' resurrection was a resurrection of victory and power. Somebody give Jesus praise in the house. Nobody could stop him. Nobody.
nobody could have hold him. Nothing could have hold him and nobody could have stopped him. He came up triumphantly. Glory to God. He rose from the dead victoriously. And every soldier, they lie down like dead men for fear of the keeper. The fear of him. The keepers did shake and became as dead men. That's what, what verse Verse number four tells us in Matthew chapter 28. The, 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 um, the angel, his countenance was like lightning. And his raiment white as snow. They never see a man so vicious. They never see a man look like he's so armed and dangerous. So when you hear they came up against something more than what they could handle. This was a supernatural being. Let me tell you something. As children of God, we don't know how powerful our defense is. The angel of the Lord encamped round and about them that fear him and delivered them. There was a man in the Old Testament who was going on with a lot of chat to God's people. He was saying to them, we're going to do you this, we're going to do you that, we're going to do you this and we're going to do you that. King of Assyria and his army, they had thousands, 185,000 strong army. They come up against the children of God. And they were going on with a lot of talk. Saying all the other gods them from the other places that we fought against. They couldn't do one thing. And we're going to show you something. King Hezekiah. We're going to show you something. What we made of. Hezekiah went to before God. Him and Isaiah. And spread out the letter. The rude letter with the, with the road to them. Before the Lord. And said Lord intervene. You see what they're saying. But show yourself strong. That man can will really know who you are. And the Lord turned up into the camp of Assyria and dispatched one angel. Somebody say one angel. one angel. It was only one single angel he sent into the camp of the Assyrian army. And 185 soldiers were destroyed. One angel did that. So when you hear that angel sat on that stone and his, his, he was radiant and wearing shiny um, raiment. They couldn't touch him. Soldiers couldn't hold down that angel. Jesus went as a lamb to the slaughter on Good Friday. But when you hear Easter Sunday came, when Resurrection Sunday came, he came up with power. Somebody said power in the house. Power! Glory to God. No force could hold him back because he was powerful. And he had the angel in his car not to back him up to. So no man or not, no power or not could have stopped him. He arose triumphantly. Death could not hold him captive. The grave could not hold him. The stone could not block him. The guards could not restrain him. Nothing could have stopped him. Because he was powerful on that resurrection Sunday. He arose as king of kings and lord of lords. And Jesus said in Revelation chapter 1 verse 18. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. He's got the keys now. Jesus also said in Matthew chapter 28 verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them his disciples saying... All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. When Jesus came down as a babe in a manger, you would think, well, he was so vulnerable then. He was just like one of our children here. He grew up and he became a man. But after his resurrection. He came up with such power. He came up with such a dynamite power. After taking the keys of hell and of death. He was able to say in Matthew chapter 28 and verse 18. That all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He is all powerful. Come on. Sometimes the enemy wants to make us seem as if, uh, make us feel as if the Jesus that we are serving is some kind of puny God, but he's not the puny God. He's all powerful. 
He's powerful in earth and he's powerful in heaven. And it is true that we should never forget the wonderful work that was done by Jesus on the old rugged cross and his shed blood that will never lose its power to save sinners and to heal the sick, to protect us from harm and to give us total victory over the devil. However, never also forget his story did not end on the cross. We find as we learn this morning in Sunday school in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 17 it says, and if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Some were saying that there's no resurrection from the dead. But if it's not so and Christ is not raised, verse 18 tells us, then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now, in, now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them that slept. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Jesus said in John chapter 14 verse 19, Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye shall see me, and because I live, ye shall live also. Hallelujah! Because of the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, we too have this glorious hope. That we will one day be raised from the dead if we pass off and go off the scene of this earth before Jesus comes to rapture his, rapture his church. And we have a great hope for all the saints that have gone on before. We are going to see them again one of these days. Because Jesus was risen from the dead. All our loved ones who died in Christ, they too will also be risen from the dead one of these days. And 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, from verse 4, 13, we, it, it confirms this. It says there, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not as even others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so then also which, which sleep, them also which sleep in Jesus, Will God bring with him? For we say unto you by the word of the Lord. That we which are alive. And remain unto the coming of the Lord. Shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself. Somebody said the Lord himself. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Hallelujah. And the, vo the, the, the voice of the archangel. And with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain. Shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. To meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Hallelujah. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. It is true that when we get attached to all loved ones on this earth. And especially when they were morally good and helpful and kind. When they're not with us anymore, we do miss them. But the Bible is saying here, we don't have to sorrow like the people of the world who don't have any hope. We can comfort ourselves with these words. That because Jesus is risen from the dead, we too shall rise again. And our loved ones who have gone on before us, they will rise again. So no grave will be able to keep our bodies down when the trump of the Lord shall sound. Hallelujah! The dead in Christ will rise first. And those who are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet them in the clouds. And so shall they ever be with the Lord. Amen! One of these days, there will be no more separation. All the brethren who have gone on before, we shall see them again. Hallelujah! And we are going to have one big celebration and one rejoicing. Won't it be a time when we get over yonder? Hallelujah. We're going to sing and shout and we're going to dance about. Hallelujah. When we get over yonder. 
Praise the name of the Lord. That's what we are living for. That's what we are serving God for. Because we know that there is an eternal destiny that is awaiting us. Amen. Once you be true and faithful, we will reach there one day. Amen. Amen. No matter what dark Friday experience you may be facing today. Remember Sunday is on the way. It cannot be over until God says it's over. And it cannot be over until we win the battle. So it doesn't matter how dead your case seems right now. Joel chapter 2 verse 25 says, And I will restore. Hallelujah! To you the years that the locust had eaten. And the canker worm and the caterpillar. And the palmer worm. My great army which I sent among you. Somebody say to your neighbor, I will restore. The Lord is saying to you, he will restore. It doesn't matter what you have lost. It is, doesn't matter how long you have been losing. All these worms, canker worm, locust, caterpillar, Palmer worm, all these worms is as if the enemy has been targeting you and he wants to strip you. Some of us have been stripped of our health. Some of us have been stripped of our finance. Some of us have been stripped of all sorts of wonderful things that we really treasure. And now it seems as if they are just on the verge of dying. Some of the cases seem as if there is no reversal for them. But even now, hallelujah, the Lord said unto me, unto, unto matter, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though you are dead, yet shall he live. And Martha said, Lord, I know that my brother is dead. But even now, once you understand, something can happen. Even now, there is still hope for somebody in this house. Amen. There is still hope for your case. It's not gone too far for God to deal with. Amen. As a matter of fact, my father used to say, when this matter gets bad till it starts smell bad. Call in Jesus. He could handle it. So if the Lazarus was four days dead, the Lord still said, move away the stone. Because I'm going to perform a miracle to show you my power today. And when they moved away the stone, we find that the Lord Jesus just called three words. Lazarus, come forth! And the resurrection power of our Lord Jesus was so real that he that was dead four days arose and came back to life. And he was loosed. And Jesus said, loose him! And let him go. Somebody give God praise in the house for the resurrection. Resurrector who is still in business. Hallelujah! If you have a case that seems so dark, so gloomy and so sad, it might be your Good Friday today. And you might be thinking, is there a way out for me? God don't want his children to be enduring long-term sadness and grief and sorrow and depression when he has given us a word of hope. Keep faith in God's word alive. Amen. Amen. And no matter how it feels, no matter how it looks to the natural eyes and the natural senses, if Jesus' disciples only believed and stood 100% on God's word, on the first resurrection Sunday, they would have been rejoicing. They would have been having a big celebration. Instead of them being cooped up in some sort of little room hiding for fear, they should have already gone to the tomb long time before those women. Just to see what was going to happen. But when you hear fear is in our hearts, it lick out faith. And when we don't have any faith, we can't see God move because without faith, it's impossible to please God. They were grieving. Imagine on the first... Easter Sunday, the first resurrection Sunday. Imagine they were hiding and in great fear and in great sadness when they should have been appreciating the risen Lord. 
They were grieving for somebody and over somebody who was alive and well. None of Jesus' 11 disciples had the courage to go to the tomb early on the resurrection morning. But the women were very much early. And they made the first move. And they realized that Jesus was no longer there. The angel said to the woman, he's not here. He is risen. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Fear is a very dangerous thing. And if it gets out of control, it could cause us to lose and miss a lot of blessings. Fear is the opposite of faith. And that's why we find that 2 Timothy verse, um, chapter 1 verse 7 tells us, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. When fear takes control of the mind and takes control of your system, you can't really think sound. You can't act sound because your mind is not renewed by the word. And so these disciples were in the flesh. They were in the carnal mindedness when they should have been in the spirit realm. We find that Romans 10 verse 17 tells us, so then faith cometh by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Jesus was telling them over and over again, on the third day I will rise again. But it seemed as if the word was not registering. It was not finding the lodging place in their hearts. But today we don't want to be like that. We want the word of God to find a lodging place. To find good soil and to germinate and to bring forth good fruit. Come on somebody. When the word finds good soil. It will bring forth good fruit. And Jesus was not happy with the disciples' lack of faith in his word. And so when he met some of them on the road going to Amos, in Luke 20, 24, verse 25, he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? It had to be done. Why are you all walking down the road and behaving so sorrowful? It's really not called for. It was written about and it had to be done. And he explained to them from Moses and the Psalms and all the, and the prophets the things concerning himself. So that they would understand that it had to be so. It wasn't anything to really be sorrowful about. Especially on the third day when they should have been rejoicing knowing that the master was alive. Afterward, Mark 16, 14, read it earlier today, says, Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief. He pulled them up on the hardness of heart because they believed not that, not them which had seen him after he was risen. Even we find that Jesus, when he spoke to the eleven that time, when he came there, when he appeared first to his disciples, he said, peace be unto you. They were hiding away. And Thomas was not there. So Thomas said to those who saw him, I know what you all are saying. But if I can't see him for myself, I've got to see for myself the scar, the nail scarred hands. I've got to really trust my hands into that side where he was pricked. I've got to see him for myself and check him out before I believe. No faith was in Thomas. And so we find that after eight days, well, and on the eighth day, he turned up again one week later. And they were still behind those who had to speak unto them and saying, peace be unto you. Let me tell you something. Satan is a crippler. And here he comes with his lies and his deception and his fear. And his unbelief. He could keep us in bondage when God set us free long time. They should have been enjoying the time with the resurrected Lord. But they were there hiding away. Behind closed doors, Jesus appeared unto them and said, peace be unto you again. And he said to Thomas, Thomas, you're asking for evidence. Here I am. Check my hands. Check my feet. 
check my son. Thomas saw that it was the Lord. Thomas said, oh my Lord and my God. He was, he was blown away to know that the Lord was actually back around. And when Thomas believed Jesus because he saw him, Jesus said, Thomas, you believe because you have seen. But blessed are those who have not seen, but yet believe. We were not there to check out the hands and the feet for ourselves. But we have believed in the risen Lord. And because we have believed him, we have salvation today through the blood of Jesus. Somebody give God praise today. Hallelujah. Faith is the substance of things they hope for. And the evidence of things not seen. For we walk by faith and not by sight. It really doesn't matter what it looks like to the natural eyes. If God said it, it is so. Today God is telling us, Good Friday is gone. And Resurrection Sunday is here. Hallelujah. And God expects us to receive and to believe and to apply his word. He is no longer in the grave. And Jesus don't want us to live in fear any longer. He don't want us to live in doubt and in unbelief and in sadness any longer. Because he is no longer in the grave. Jesus is alive. Somebody shout he's alive. He is alive. Hallelujah. And because he lived, we shall live also. Jesus said in his word that the thief cometh. John 10.10. 10, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I am come that they might, have, they might have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus wants to tell us today we don't need to grieve. We don't need to be sorrowful. We don't need to drag on this sulkiness any longer. Because the resurrection Sunday is here. And I'm here to bring change. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. I'm here to bring deliverance. I'm here to bring healing. I'm here to bring breakthrough to my people. That's why I'm alive. So that I could meet the needs of my people. So many people are praying to dead gods. Praying to idol gods. They can't knock a stroke for them. They're as dead, dead as a doornail. But thank God for Jesus. He is alive and well. Somebody give Jesus praise in the house. Hallelujah. When we pray to him, he hears and he answers. And he comes through for his people all the time. Hallelujah. No matter what we stand in need of today. It's resurrection Sunday. The resurrector is here. He rose again to give us life abundantly in this world. And eternal life in the life to come. If you're not saved, you can be quickened today. Because we were once in sin. But you find that Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 tells us. And ye had it quickened. Who was dead in trespasses and in sin. One time we were dead, dead, dead like a doornail in sin. But the Lord has quickened us and brought us back to life spiritually. Somebody give God praise in the house. For the resurrection of our souls. When we were dead and going to a crisis eternity. He quickened us and put brand new life inside of us. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you Jesus. You may be saved but... You may be cold spiritually, lukewarm spiritually, but the Holy Ghost power can quicken us today. Hallelujah. Amen. John 6, 63 tells us it is the spirit that quicken it. The flesh profited nothing. Hallelujah. But the spirit can do the job today. Hallelujah. The church all over the world needs a revival. We can't do it by fleshly methods. But the Holy Ghost can bring, can bring about revival. Amen. God wants his children to believe him to resurrect every dead situation in their lives. By his resurrection power. Some of us are facing some dead financial situations. Some dead marriages. Some dead family relationships. Some of us are facing some sicknesses and diseases. That mankind say that there is no more hope for us. But once Jesus, the resurrected Lord is on the scene. And Dr. Jesus turns up. Hallelujah. Healing will manifest today. 
because it's resurrection time and it is resurrection day. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The healer is still in operation. Everything he did in Bible times, he's still doing it today. Amen. He told us in his word, we read it this morning. In his name, we can cast out devils. In his name, we can take up serpents. We can speak with new tongues. We can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Hallelujah. If we drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt us once we bless it in the name of Jesus. For the, so the name of Jesus is very much powerful and effective today. It's never going to lose its power. The resurrected Lord is here to restore perfect health to his people. The resurrected Lord is here to transform every situation that Satan may be calling hopeless. The people who sees what we are going through, they may say that there is no more hope for us. But, once we turn the case over to Jesus, the resurrector will bring it back to life today. Somebody give Jesus praise in the house. The resurrector. Hey, Amen. The resurrector is going to bring it back to life today. There are some cases that man can't handle. But I heard the word of the Lord say, I am the Lord, the God of our flesh. Is there anything too hard for me to do? Hallelujah. The Lord said back to his servant, I made the heavens and I made the earth and there is nothing too hard for me to do. So if you have a case that it is hard where man is concerned, hopeless where man is concerned, Hopeless where your flesh is concerned. And the enemy is telling to you, just give up and throw in the towel. The Lord has sent a word of hope. That Good Friday is gone. The days of mourning. The days of giving up hope. The days of thinking that everything is finished and the enemy has prevailed. That era is gone. Fresh hope must come again into our hearts. Hallelujah. Fresh hope must come again into our hearts. Because we have heard a word today telling us that Resurrection Sunday, it is right here, right now. Somebody give God praise in the house. His resurrection power is in operation. And he wants to bring back everything that is dead back to life today. Amen. All we have to do is to believe. All we have to do is to stand on his promises. Whatever God has promised is more than able to do for you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us and thank you for listening to this timely and powerful message. You have heard the word and now we would like to extend this opportunity to you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you wish to do this, Please just say this short prayer after me. The Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me of all of my sins and cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. Save me and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I thank you for answering my prayer and I thank you for saving me. Amen. And if you have said that prayer, congratulations and welcome into the family of Christ. If you would like to contact us or even visit us, the information that you need will be on your screen in a few seconds. Until next time, goodbye. God richly bless you.